Okay folks, so welcome to the next installment of the Terrible Fire History uh, series. Today is the TF330. Um, I thought I'd actually, for once, get all three revisions of the of the cards. They're remarkably similar. This is a Rev 1. It was designed in 2018. It was for the CD32. It's an 030 accelerator with SD RAM and a few other bits and pieces which we'll talk about when we get into it. Uh, this is the Rev 2. And this is the Rev 3B, which is, is I think it was just some minor um, layout changes. So let's talk about this guy. So what is it? What was it? It was a um, an O30 accelerator for the CD32. Basically, the next step up from the um, from the TF32H, which we talked about yesterday. Um, how did it, how I went about this was I literally took the Eagle files for the the TF328 and the TF 534. I put them onto the same Eagle CAD layout and I just started working and re removing the things I didn't want. Uh, this is the, uh, this, this this time we went up to the 144 pin CPLD, the Alex CPLD, I think this is a, a 144 Microsil version. Um, it is an ID interface, 64 megabytes of SD RAM by default. These guys are bus buffers to go from the Five volt side over to the three volt side. So the the RAM SD RAM is three 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 point three volts, and the the rest of the bus is five volts. Um, the clock crystals and all these guys are all. Um, every one of these cards is usually at least stock. It's a hundred megahertz, and the CPLD divides it down to fifty. And it also does a weird stunt where it clock switches from fourteen megahertz. To 50 depending on what it's doing and I did that because I found keeping sync with the AGA chipset to be really difficult and it was a, a solution I thought was would, would carry over into the O60 cards but it didn't really there, there were some drawbacks in that but for the O30 cards it meant some of the lower some of the, the CPUs that wouldn't work co continuously at 50 megahertz would work they would uh, happily uh, some of the ones that would only work at 40 and other cards would work at up 50 here so let's uh let's see what else is on here so there's an ESP header which is a header for an ESP8266 um Wi-Fi um I don't know what you call it, dongle add-on um uh, wing whatever you want to call it you add that on there uh, you put the right program in that and you basically get um, I, and with the supplied prog programming that I, I, I gave, you could use Roadshow or, what, or one of your TCP IP stacks to connect quite slowly, but through the standard serial port on the Amiga, uh, you could use it to connect to the internet. And it, it, that kind of worked really well. And the idea of that was, wasn't that you would want, you would get blisteringly fast internet, it was that you could just do things like, you could use Amiga Explorer, you could update your CF card without having to pull the card out. That was the idea of it. I don't know how many people actually did that. You know, you could mount a Samba drive and you could copy some, you know, you could update your WHD load, for example. Um, one of the things on this card is free Chucky Gang. Um, let's talk about that for a second. So, um, around about the time this card was being made, um, Chucky Gang was... He was... Um, he had purchased what he thought was a Blizzard 1260 card blank from somebody in Germany and that somebody claimed to be phase 5 and maybe they were, maybe they weren't, but whatever they did was they, they screwed up the order to um, to the board house and they didn't include the ground pane. They charged Chucky a good bit of money for what he, for those, for those blank cards. Uh, and in my view, he was basically stealing, uh, and I will stand by that in court. I think he was basically um, trying to gouge as much money as he could for something that he didn't create and didn't have the rights for. And uh, I started this campaign, hashtag free Chucky Gang. I, I, I went basically to war on Twitter against the guy. Um, I don't know if it was successful or not. Um, a couple of years later, I think... Um, this guy uh, has now disappeared, he's done nothing, so, um, and I'm still around doing cards, making stuff, and generally 
creating a nuisance of myself. So, yeah, so I think the campaign was successful. What ended up happening though was, um, the reason it was free Chucky Gang was, um, Salvador had basically got Chucky's YouTube channel locked down, um, copyright strike, and I think some in, some in, um, some court injunctions, um, which meant that John couldn't leave the country for a bit. So um, that uh, it all you know it all it all got quite serious, and then it it's, it seems to have petered out and, and stopped. But yeah, I'm glad it's all over now. Um, yeah, so this is the Rev One with all the patch wires on it. As you can see, these are the kind of patch wires I end up putting on things when I when I make a mistake about stuff, and then I just fix that in the next version. And this is why when I, I produce something and it's working, it's it's not always immediate that I can just give it out to people. You know, I have to make sure it's not going to make sure it's going to be reliable for people before I do release it. So there you go. There's the TF three thirty. It was the first SD card experiment I did it was I, I wasn't sure it was going to work because I was I'd never done um, I'd done um, SD with uh, SD RAM with um, FPGAs before but I wasn't sure if these CPLDs would be up to it and they were and we've used them all over the place since so it was a great experiment um, and yeah there we go um, I think that's everything I, I, don't think, I think it was pretty basic it, was, it, it gave the CD32 a good kick in the pants it, it it let you play Doom, it let you play quite a lot of these um, older Amiga titles at full speed. I think... Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I think at the, at the time the SX Pro, whatever it was, the SX32 Pro, whatever, they were four or five hundred pounds and this was coming in at maybe a hundred and fifty max. So it was... And, and these were available whereas the SX Pro wasn't, it was just unobtainium. So this kind of was meant to replace or be be a cheap alternative to that um to those um high-end cd32 accelerators from back in the day so i think it was a great success okay well thank you for watching um if you like the series uh, consider subscribing because there'll be another one of these tomorrow and um, if you like the video, give it a like. And if you've got any thoughts or remember anything from back in the day, leave a, leave a message down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer you. Okay, thank you for watching. Take care and have a good one.